Skeletons are on their way back to the refugee camp. For some reason, Agile and Rowdy Skeleton get into a pose-off on the cart competing against each other for the best pose. Sleeves seem to appreciate the pose-off and give little golf claps for the two skeletons as they pose against each other. The captain is just curled into a ball, ignoring everybody. Auspicious Skeleton is just happily managing the horses. Drunk Skeleton is being Drunk Skeleton and hiccups slightly. As they finally enter the perimeter of the refugee camp, they travel past the empty carriage they had hijacked earlier, but there's no signs of friendly Skeleton. The cart clip-clops into the main grounds of the camp, and the slaves in the cart stand up and begin looking around for people they know. Some of the slaves give out a cry and jump out of the cart, running towards the people they know and embracing them tearfully. Unfortunately, some of the slaves in the cart see no one they recognise, and slump down against the wood of the carts as it rattles along the ground, their eyes either dead or rueful with angry tears. Cart halts in front of the ramshackle HQ, and everyone there lifts their heads to look at the skeletons. Agile Skeleton hops down off the cart and strides up confidently to Kyla, the necromancer, with big calcium energy, and announces to her that he has the captain. What do you mean you have a captain? Skeletons regale her in the story of how they slapped down a massive captain and shackled him, bringing him back to the camp. Kyla rubs her temples and mutters, I sent you to get information, books, charts, maps, journals. Agile answers back, Yep. Got all those things. Kyla and Agile stare at each other for a moment. Where are they? With the female. Refugees. The, uh, camp. There. Agile mutters in her head, scratching at his skull slightly. Kyla turns around and grandly opens her arms to the hundreds of refugees in the camp. Well, where are they, Agile? Agile Skeleton places his skeletal fingers on his chin in an open L shape. Mmm... The rest of the skeletons all collectively face plan. Ah, fuck. God damn it. Agile Skeleton ponders aloud via his link. I guess they're in the camp somewhere. Kyla smacks Agile in the ribcage with her fist and angrily orders him to go and collect the charts and books. Agile is reproachful and begins to openly sass her, saying about how he has risked his undead life to get her the things she needs, whining openly. Kyla throws her hands in the air. Who did you even give the stuff to? Well, you remember how I was in the tent. Are you saying you give the rest of the intel to a bunch of naked concubines that you didn't even know? Yes. Did you even tell them where to go? Yes. Here. Kyla's eyes become hooded as she stares angrily at Agile. Here as in the giant camp full of people? Yeah, well, I didn't expect the camp to be so big. It was big when you left. Well, I didn't get to tour the grounds before you sent me off. Kyla reaches up and grabs Agile Skeleton by his bottom jaw, pulling him down to her level. Go find the intel. Agile Skeleton grumps and stumps away, muttering mentally. You are the worst boss. He gets a smack on the back of the skull as he exits and begins to try and find the ladies he sent. You're just proving my point. Kyla wings a lamp at Agile Skeleton angrily at his attitude an agile skeleton reaches up and snatches the lamp out of the air with a cling. Just go find the damn books. Agile skeleton sets the lamp down and continues to grump into the crowd, who parts to make room for him. Kyla looks back at the rest of the skeletons and opens her palms. So, who's the guy in the cart? Skeletons all rattle into her head at once and begin to relay to her via what they have called Necroscape about their intentions to interrogate the captain. Who is he? what he's done, etc. Kyla is listening with her brows fried and a small vein is seen appearing in her neck. Agile, however, has finally found the woman he has sent to the camp. The women are huddled together, still in the rather befitting clothes that they were wearing when they were sent off, some of them even holding the books and charts in such a way to hide what they can. As Agile walks into their view, they call, cry out happy and give him awkward hugs, then hand all of their contents to him. Agile Skeleton bundles it all into his arms and gives the woman a thumbs up. The woman give him a thumbs up back and they continue to stare at each other. The woman standing there with her hands clasped in front of them. Agile Skeleton rattles nervously and looks around slightly, the long paws stretching on. Agile Skeleton slowly turns, twitching his skull towards them awkwardly, 
before fully turning around and walking away quickly. And they follow. Back with the other skeletons, Kyla breathes in deep and asks where this fancy captive is. Rowdy goes, right here, and Hay tosses the captain off the cart, right towards Kyla. However, it was just a toss. Captain lands face first into the ground and snaps his neck on the contact. <laughs> what? <laughs> the- <laughs> Oh, that's quality. I fucking love this story, to be honest with you. That's brilliant. <laughs> the body crumpling into a pile in front of the necromancer. Whoa, what the hell was that? She says, looking up at Rowdy, bemused. Everyone else in HQ looked down at the captain, then back at Rowdy. Everyone's shocked, confused, or amused. <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy Skelton's arms are still out from the toss. <laughs> And his lower jaw open, <laughs> is looking down at the captain in shock. <laughs> Drunk and auspicious skeleton are also looking down at the captain. Drunk skeleton holding his head. So, what did you guys bring him here for anyway? Kyla asks, as the body slowly slips down into its side. The neck crumpled and clearly broken. Skeletons explode in anger at Rowdy, and again relay what they wanted to question him. That's fine, that's fine, she says, and reaches down towards the captain. After a few moments, his eyes snap open and let out a blood-curdling scream, his face contorting feverishly. I'm dead! I'm fucking dead! I'm dead! Oh my god, I'm dead! (laughs) Kyla gives him a few small slaps in the cheek. Shh, shh, you're screaming, it's not nice to scream. I'd be screaming too, I've got my (laughs) neck bro. No. Agile hears the screaming and double times it back to HQ, the women following just as quickly. Kyla looks down at the captain as she mutters, Just shut up for a minute. And his mouth snaps shut at once, his eyes rolling in panic at the sudden loss of control. She knife hands at the skeleton in front of her, and she is quite displeased that any of this is even happening, let alone humouring it. What is it that you numbskulls wanted to know? Skeletons begin to formulate their questions and begin to interrogate in earnest, but he is clamming up and refusing to answer. The skeletons threaten to slap him again until he answers. Mate, you already broke his neck. Well, that was by accident. <laughs> Didn't mean to. You wouldn't slap a dead man. A loud slap echoes through the air as he is bitch slapped back into his undead reality. <laughs> oh, brother! Drunken skeleton growls. His hands raised again for another slap. The dead captain can't even turn his head. Just seeing Kyla's face and these random skeleton hands coming at his face. For some reason, drunk skeleton begins caressing the undead captain's cheek as the rest begin slapping him. Why caressing? Which is unsettling even more as drunk skeleton begins to rub his ears and communicate to him via the undead link in his head in a German accent. (laughs) Kyla is slav squatting and resting her head on her hand watching the spectacle and trying to figure out if she should be annoyed or amused at it. After much terrifying mental torture and interrogating, the skeletons are slowly able to pry out where the main transfer point of resource coming in and trips going out along the border, where they lay over, where the camps are, a large plantation, etc. Agile Skeleton has also finally joined the rest of the group and comes into view of a bunch of skeletons bullying a crying undead man. Why is he fucking dead? Agile Skeleton asks. Ah, gee, I wonder, Rowdy, Drunk Skeleton says, giving the captain's nose a honk. (laughs) He was like this when we got here, Rowdy says, rapidly slapping the captain's forehead. He was alive when I fucking left. Agile rattles back and walks over, giving him a few encouraging slaps to feel included. (laughs) As he does this, there are a few short giggles heard from behind. Agile Skeleton does a very slow turn, looking over his shoulder, his bones almost groaning as he does. The women are giggling behind their hands, knowing full well who is on the ground, getting slapped around by skeletons. Agile Skeleton slowly looks back around to the captain and joins in on the interrogation. Even the knoll, who the party found out is called first, joins in on the interrogation. Rowdy threatening to unleash the knoll to cut out his throat and wear his face. More information is retrieved. It gets to the point that Agile Skeleton has his skull pressed to the undead captain's face, still trying to pump him for more information. I believe that is more than enough, Kyla says, and snaps her fingers again, the undead captain becoming fully dead now. First takes this opportunity to take out her knife and begin to carve away at the dead captain, 
and retrieve a fresh larnix for Rowdy. Rowdy takes it while Agile Skeleton tries to shield the women from the grisly scene. Do you have to do that here? Agile rattles out furiously. What? My throat's all worn out? Rowdy mutters back, putting it where it needs to be in order to work. All right, Kyla sighs, standing up and scratching at her eyelid. Where are the books? As the motley crew walks into HQ, <laughs> she takes the books, journals, dispatches and such and places them down on the giant makeshift field table, spreading them out and writing down her own notes in her journal as the guard captain and other military officials from the burn city crowded around her, trying to see what they believed they needed. The skeletons can really see the weariness and age set into your face as she writes, scribbling down with a soft graphite pencil. She stands up and leans back, cracking her spine as she does, and looking over at her skeletons. All right, how about you guys take a couple of hours and get some new gear if you need it? And she jabs her pencil at a large pile of gear from the carriage heist that Friendly Skeleton left. Grab some of that if you need it. Agile Skeleton raises a finger. Where is Friendly Skeleton? Kyla clams up suddenly and stares heatedly at Agile, her eyes hot with anger and embarrassment. He went off to help someone else, I guess. The skeletons look at each other quizzically, and Kyla pinches her nose as Agile pats her head. You're doing your best, and don't worry, you still have us. Agile quips and gestures towards drunk, rowdy and auspicious. She very slowly leans up towards Agile and mutters through her teeth. No, Agile, we have them. She looks over pointedly at the women, who are still lacking in any real clothes. The knoll who is picking her nose. <laughs> the horses and the cows, who are either nibbling at Auspicious Skelton's clothes or licking his skull. <laughs> Auspicious looks at the necromancer and asks her about the money that was in the carriage. Kyla, while riding, jerks her head over to a small guarded section of the HQ where a small cluster of chests sit, then points at the gear pile again. Skelton's first move to the pile of gear, a collection of steel breastplates, travelling cloaks, Short swords, boots, bit knives, daggers, a whole selection of stuff. Skeletons become quite geared now. Rowdy putting a steel breastplate over his chainmail, adding a cloak, the rest adding gear as well. Rowdy looks down at first, the knoll, and tells her to go and find something she likes. First steps over gamely and sniffs slightly at the gear, before finding some better pants and ripping the legs to fit a hole for her tail. A short sword plus a sheath and belt, and then holds up one of the cloaks. She sniffs at it excitedly, before putting it upon her shoulders and setting it up. While the skeletons are busily arming and armouring themselves, they see the knoll start spinning in a circle while cheering happily, and seems to just be enjoying the sensation of the cloak twirling behind her. Rowdy asks the necromancer if she knows anyone who can make leather armour for first. Kyla sides eyes the knoll for a moment before answering with a curt, Nope, don't know any, and goes back to writing in her journal. However, first is still doing her princess spin while the concubines go, Aww, first stops, stares at them, then growls quietly. <laughs> <laughs> concubines move towards Agile while Agile tells Rowdy to get his pet under control. Auspicious Skeleton figures out how to attach a bunch of sharp things to his conduit. After a bit of snipping, Rowdy finds out a rather large woman was the head of a tailoring guild and gives her a soft poke in the shoulder. She turns around, a quite fat woman with a very heavy eyebrows and rough stubble on her chin, and she looks down her nose at the skeleton. Yes? How may I help you? Rowdy has to give his borrowed voice box a little gurgle before speaking. Hello, yes. Hi, I was wondering if you could help me with the tailoring job. Today? She narrows her eyes and asks him what he means by a tailoring job. I have a, um, a friend who's rather small and needs custom equipment. She leans to the side and looks over Rowdy's shoulder to the knoll, who is swishing the cloak along the ground in amusement. I assume the furry one there. Yeah, she's kind of on the small side. The woman grumbles. Uh, yeah. Well, what were you wanting exactly? Agile Skelton scratches at his cranium. <laughs> Well, um, leather armour would be ideal. You think I have the leather required in this situation? She says aghast, holding out her flabby arms and motioning to the current state. 
Where do you presume I find this leather, Mr. Skeleton Man? Rowdy hunches his shoulders a little and shrinks back with a, well, it was a shot in the dark. What if I found some material? The woman scratches at her hairy chin, eyeballing the skeleton haughtily. Sure, if you find me some nice passable leather, I'm sure one of my lads can make your pet thing some armour, yeah. As she says pet, first stops twirling and perks up her ears, paying attention now. Excellent. I'll bring you some as soon as I find any, and I'll be sure to pay you for the work. Yeah, I'm sure you will, she says, and turns around from Agile to see Drunk ripping at his own cloak with a knife. The woman exclaims, What are you doing? Stop, stop, stop! She waddles over and snatches the knife away from Drunk Skelton. You can't just hack away at it, you little fool. Here, let me do it. It's wool for silk sakes. She grabs a large, professional-looking kilt, and takes up some elegant yet robust shears and begins cutting away at where Drunk is pointing. After some time, she is now holding up a large piece of wool cut from the cloak and she looks at Drunk. Well, what is your plan with this? Roddy translates for Drunk Skeleton that he is wanting a head wrapping to hide his skull and bemusedly begins to wrap the wool expertly, applying little clips she pulls from the bag until Drunken is wrapped in a tight and professional looking balaclava. Elated, Drunk Skeleton offers his knife to the woman, who takes it. Some feet away, Auspicious Skeleton feels a licking on the back of his skull and turns around to see his cows, and happily rubs at their face before noticing that all the cows are wearing flower crowns. (laughs) What? Auspicious Skeleton tilts his skull at the flower crowns and hears a thumping of feet from the other side of the cow. Auspicious walks around the cow to see a small platoon of kids, half of them hefting buckets, and all of them wearing the same kind of flower crowns that adorn the heads of the cows. The kids wave, and the skeleton waves back. The kids point at the cows, and not knowing what they want, the skeleton nods. At once, all the kids move forward and begin to quite expertly milk the cows, the boy taking up most of the effort of actually tugging on the teats. The little girls catch the eye of a suspicious skeleton, and the skeleton points to the flower crowns on the cow, then points to his own skull. The boys milking the cows roll their eyes, but the girls giggle and rush off into the crowd, while Auspicious Skeleton idly pets the head of the cow in the front of him, who happily chews on his sleeve. Kyla is busily scribbling in her journal when Agile Skeleton walks up to her, looking over her shoulder before asking her if there's any kind of way or spell that can let them talk to people as skeletons. She ignores him for a few moments, still scribbling down and looking at maps for a few more moments before setting down her rough pencil. The necromancer leans back and cracks her spang, reaching her hands into the air and giving herself a bit of a stretch as she thinks. There are some ways, probably, that can allow you skeletons to have some kind of voice that will still be in the memory of your souls, she murmurs, placing an arm behind her head, gripping at the other arm and bending it to the side to get a few more kinks out. That way you can talk to these creatures and she waves her one free hand at the concubines and the gnoll. The concubines don't take kindly to being called creatures and glare at her, while the gnoll is still busily swishing her stolen cloak and trying to make a mask like Drunken Skeleton. (laughs) Kyla then reaches down into your rather large sling bag and opens the flap. The mood of the room changes as the book is now exposed into the air, and it seems that the book takes up almost all of the room in the bag the pages alone seeming to be a whole hand width thick. When she begins to pull the book from her bag, everyone else that is of the living turns slightly, as if acknowledging the presence of the power that has suddenly filled the room, many eyes watching the book as it sets down on the table with a hollow thud. Even the light seems to dim in the ramshackle headquarters, despite being almost in the middle of the day. However, Kyla seems to use the book with idle ease, flicking the ancient pages with her deft fingers. Small purple sparks kicking and flicking as her flesh slides across the parchment. It's almost as if she's looking for a cake recipe. At ease, while the rest of the company seems uncomfortable that such a tome is in the open air. As she flicks through the pages, she talks to the skeletons via their link, idly talking to them about how many amulets, much like Rowdy's, can allow you to manipulate certain objects to make sounds or create temporary links, much like Friendly Skeleton's necklace. As she is saying this, she slowly moves a page, 
tracing her finger down its length, a long purple spark coursing along with her finger as she does. A soul echo, she murmurs aloud, as all the skeletons are now leaning in. The necromancer is now squinting at the extremely small lettering, doing her best to read it, despite the very dark ink on dark paper. It appears I can let you guys speak from your mouths via the wells within your head, a kind of voice echo of your trapped souls. It also says here, results may vary, though some thoughts may become allowed rather than personal. Oh God. All the skeletons excitedly agree, wanting some way to communicate with those around them. It seems I just need bone dust, bone dust of the wicked? She chirps awkwardly. Bone dust from where? Asks Rowdy. From bones? Kyla stares blankly at Rowdy, her voice slow and unsure. Well, yeah, but our bones? Some other bones? The skeletons and necromancer all turn their heads slowly to the dead captain lying <laughs> crumbled on the ground, throat torn out, and currently vacating his bowels as his body begins to lose its faculties, piercing the air with a long, drawn out fart. <laughs> Rowdy walks over and grabs onto the dead captain's arm, dragging him closer to the HQ. Oh no, come on. N- not not that one. Ah, jeez. The necromancer groans, putting her hand on her forehead as the captain leaves a trail of unfavourable bloody fluids on the ground. You know what? Just cut it out over there and bring it over here. Rowdy looks at her confused, but after a few more requests from the necromancer, he relents to just starting to fill it. <laughs> to just starting to fill it and debone the captain right there in front of the spot. The whole headquarters is looking on in disgust, and Agile again tries to hide what's going on from the concubines, holding up his bony arms to try and shield their view, while yelling mentally at Rowdy, his jaw rattling angrily. The necromancer just sets a resolved and embarrassed jaw, and goes to retrieve her mortar and pestle from her bag, which also seems to take up most of the room within the tall bag. As this is going down, the little girls return with both Millie and Kyron. As Millie arrives, she sees her favourite skeletons and raises her hand in hello. Hey guy, what the hell is that? She says, pointing at Rowdy, who is now holding a meaty femur just above the meaty hole from where he took it. Kyron just kind of chuckles. Awesome. This little girl, however, ignores the whole scene and runs up to Auspicious with a gigantic flower crown almost gaudy in the amount of flowers they have wound together. Auspicious skeleton wears it proudly and bends down, ruffling hair and pinching any cheek within pinching distance. Not even the boys, buckets with milk in hand, are safe from his reach. Agile nods in Millie and Kyron's direction. Millie, now confused even more so than before, moves her hand from the filleted body to the small cluster of women standing near Agile skeleton. Who, who are they? She cries, her finger pointing from the thigh to the breast to everything in between. (laughs) Kyron laughs again and points with Millie, her own finger pointing at a woman with a particular amount of exposed underboob. Nice, Agile. Agile skeleton whirls around and points at Rowdy. Tell them I rescued them. I can't, I'm getting bones. You can't get bones and talk at the same time. I don't wanna, I'm busy. What do you want to translate? Rowdy growls. Tell them I rescued them. Rowdy looks over at Millie and Kyron, his sockets somehow having a mischievous glint. Agile says he stole them, <laughs> Rowdy says via meat speak, twirling the still bloody femur in his hand. Millie is aghast at Agile, stammering and looking between Rowdy and Agile skeleton. Kyron throws her hands into the air. You stole women from slavers? Kyron shares a high five with Agile, while the women in question watch them bashfully. Drunk Skelton takes the opportunity to jump behind Agile and hits the hardest dab that he can, his bony elbow almost touching his foot from how deep it is. Kyron gives a cry and tries to match the Drunk Skelton's dab while Millie looks on in horror. The necromancer is refusing to look at any of them, her eyes closed and finger working on her eyebrows in slow circles. Rowdy eventually has enough bones, drying them on the grass and gathering them in his arms. Millie and Kyron, however, also ask about the friendly skeleton, having not seen him since they arrived, and the whole team going off to strike the carriage. The necromancer hangs her head slightly, piping up moodily. He went on his own little mission, I suppose. 
in which some of the people in the HQ chuckle, and Kyla reaches out towards Rowdy for the bones. Millie is now darkly looking at the necromancer, wondering what happened while Kyla begins to break up the fresh bone in her mortar, sprinkling something into it from a small pouch to dry it out. First has been skulking in the background under her cloak the entire time, her feelings having been hurt by the woman calling her a pet, <laughs> and is poking at the crate with her new knife. Auspicious fills in the time with taking care of his horses and cows, learning from the boys and girls that his animals have been improving morale and helping keeping some of the people alive. The fresh milk from the cows providing some form of nutrition for the people with injuries that don't allow them to chew, or mothers unable to provide milk. Even more so, the milk seems to not have caused any harm or stomach issues, tasting pure and sweet. Auspicious skeleton gives his bony chin a scratch while listening, still trying to figure out the background behind his animal affinity. Agile skeleton turns around after hearing the sound of a throat being cleared behind him and sees the women peering at him, one of them pointing down at their exposed flesh. Agile rattles and immediately looks around, trying to think of clothes he can get for them. The only thing there is, is a surplus of extra clothes taken from the dead of the carriage raid, and he leads them towards the pile. The women have to do their best to try and find anything that fits, most of the clothes being made for men. While some shirts are a bit too tight or a bit too short, the women now have some form of clothes and are finally less exposed than when they first arrived. The camp morale has also been improved by the non-fitting clothes. <laughs> the only female trades folks seem to be taking offence. Agile Skelton gives them an appreciative thumbs up and they eye him curiously. So what now? One asks, leaning forwards to Agile. Agile Skelton sweats a little bit more calcium <laughs> and shrugs in a whatever you want motion. The women look at each other, then back at Agile Skelton. Well, you rescued us. Brought us here. You gave us clothes. We figured you want something in return, or want us to do something else. A snort is heard from the necromancer, and rattling bones are heard from multiple locations of skeletal laughter. Agile Skeleton is frantically necroscyping with the other skeletons to try and figure out something that they can do, such as watch over the camp, watch over the animals, etc. Drunk Skeleton slyly says maybe they should ask if they should have them be a companion for their master. Kyla slams her hands down in the HQ table, startling everyone as she screams out, red in the face. No, absolutely not. What? No, she roars. And the skeletons all rattle with laughter while everyone else looks on confused. Agile Skeleton perks up. Well, can't they help you out with stuff? The necromancer waves her hands silently at the women, while over Necro Skype she screams at the skeletons. What are they going to do? Hold my bottles and vials in their cleavage? The skeletons continue their knee bone slapping and dabbing, <laughs> even though their skulls are filled with the abuse of their necromancer's fury. Millie and Kyron are used to this by now, and are more or less interacting with others around them, such as First and the women, doing their best to ignore the skeletal crew and their captain's antics. Kyla's mortar and pestling begins anew, but with a bit more anger than before, she blushes furiously from what she hears in her head. Auspicious stage whispers to Drunk Skeleton, I think she's jealous. Necromancer just angrily stares into the pestle as she grinds while the skeletons fill her head with side jabs and comments about how one day she'll be big and beautiful too, and that all the heroes will want to save her as well. After a few more seconds of this, her face is almost glowing, and she slams her mortar and pestle on the table, saying out loud this time, Alright, that's enough of that. I think this is well done. She's putting off so much energy, the purple arcs of necromantic energy are discharging off her fingers and the mortar. Little sparks dancing in the air and even her eyes are almost glowing, giving a purplish hue to her very red cheeks. Even Millie feels it, feeling a tickling sensation along her old scars. And she scratches at them curiously. So who wants to be first, eh? So everyone else can now suffer your insubordinate and embarrassing comments. She growls through her teeth staring at her skeletons. Drunk Skeleton and Agile Skeleton throw their hands into the air, but lock sockets with each other as neither can tell who was first. Agile Skeleton launches himself forward, attempting to do a triple backflip and land in front of Kyla, while Drunk attempts some form of awkward and drunken cartwheel. <laughs> Despite Agile's best attempts, Drunk Skeleton cartwheels dangerously towards Kyla, while roaring, Yeah, brother! in their heads as he wheels and thumps against the table, 
scrabbling to his feet just as Agile lands right behind him. There is much angry rattling behind Drunk Skeleton. He just silently hiccups. Kyla just slow blinks a few times at Drunk Skeleton before dragging her fingers through the dust and muttering a few words. The same fanciful sparks arcing through the dust and bouncing off the lip of the bowl. Millie's scars begin to tickle and itch again and she rubs them puzzled. Kyla grabs a fistful of the dust and has to stand up on her knees on her chair in order to get to Drunk's height and holds the palm of dust up in front of her face. With a great draw of breath, she blows the dust with a hard and scatters the dust all over the skeleton's skull. The bone dust specks ignite as soon as they touch Drunk Skeleton's skull, glowing fiercely like an oil lamp being thrown against the side of a ship. (laughs) Hundreds of little fires ignite and snuff out as the dust floats down, covering the skeleton's skull with pinpoints of light all over his white bone. The party is watching Drunk Skeleton closely as the sparks begin to dwindle into nothing and Kyla looks at Drunk Skeleton expectantly, raising her eyebrows. Well, she asks, leaning back and resting her hand in the bone dust bowl. Drunk Skeleton clears his non-existent throat, creating a noise similar to two stones being rubbed together before belting out at full volume. How you doing today, lass? Drunk Skeleton roars in a harsh brogue thumping his hands on his hip bones. The voice, however, is crystal clear, yet having a kind of ethereal echo due to where it's originating. The skeletons have a collective while everyone else in the corner of the true living blink confusedly, none of them expecting such a voice to come out of an undead being. I don't remember that being a part of your legend, Kyla says, whispering confusedly, trying to quickly think back to her research about the long past heroes she resurrected. Kyla reaches up and places a hand on Drunk Skeleton's shoulders, slowly moving him aside while muttering, Okay, that's you done. Let's see what else the book's got wrong, while looking hard at Agile Skeleton. For the first time, Drunk Skeleton has an audible hiccup, his rib bones clicking together with the motion as he slides out of the way. Audible only to Agile and her, Kyla whispers that she is unsure if she really wants to give Agile a voice. Agile Skeleton gasps in a mock shock and places his skeletal hands on his bony cheekbones before the necromancer puffs more of the bone dust onto his skull. After the shower of sparks dissipates, the necromancer watches Agile carefully, a bead of unsure sweat trickling from her bangs. Agile Skeleton turns towards the concubines and moves his jaw, a soft Australian accent echoing out of his skeletal mouth. Uh, is this working? Can you hear me? There is a chorus of whoa, and what the hell is that, from the living, as they too haven't ever heard such an accent before. One of the concubines clapping her hands together and eagerly asking where he was from. Drunk Skeleton calls over. He's a criminal. That's what an island of criminals sounds like. (laughs) (laughs) All of the skeletons again roar with laughter, while only Drunk does it so that others can hear. While Agile Skeleton growls aloud for the first time since his resurrection. Ugh! I fucking hate you! Agile roars at Drunk, pointing a skeletal finger in anger at the laughing brogue Skeleton. Kyla is internally screaming, none of this having been in the stories and scriptures that she had read about them. She looks over at the other Skeletons with a mixture of fascination and fear. Rowdy Skeleton is next, and trots over to take his place before the necromancer. Kyla again takes a fistful of dust and says to the skeleton, try not to drag any more pets home, eh? And no more ripping out the throats with the help of your assistant. Rowdy wobbles his hands in, maybe, so, maybe not, motion, and the necromancer lets out a harsh sigh, which carries the bone dust over to the skeleton, dusting his brow with the small explosions and pops of purple flame. As the spell takes effect, She uses the ducky finger clasp and slowly pulls the gross, freshly hewn throat away from the amulet and tossing it over towards a small pile of crates, in which a man is sitting there, shrieks and makes a dive to avoid being hit by the fleshy tube. Rowdy stretches and lets out a long, ah, and everyone lets out a sigh of relief that at least this one sounds normal. Then for auspicious whom Drunk Skeleton points at and again yells, Come over to the bone zone, brother! Auspicious gamely strides forward, Drunk Skeleton acting as a hype man for the last of the skeleton crew. 
As the bone dust puffs over his skull, some sticks to the flowers in the crown and give a short twinkle before fading away like the rest of the dust. The necromancer raises a brow date, but instead looks back at the suspicious skeleton. Well, I don't know, does it work? A suspicious skeleton says, rattling his jaw experimentally as he speaks in a rather common and normal voice. I say it does. Kyla sighs out, thankful that at least two of the four skeletons were written about accurately. Oh yeah, brother, drunk skeleton growls, striking a fierce pose. I can speak now, brother, auspicious growls back, striking a pose as well to the brogue skeleton. Oh yeah, brother, drunk roars back, switching his pose to another. Kyla leans her head back with a wake. Oh no. As the rest of the living begin to snort with laughter or stare on in confusion, Kyron even getting in on one of the posing actions while doing her best to match the accents and harshness of the two skeletons. When asked a question, auspicious skeleton would answer them in a regular voice, but talk in this Randy Savage voice only to drunk, who would answer in kind. Am I going to have to do Randy Savage impersonations? <laughs> Millie also sighs, wondering how they've all somehow gotten weirder while Bonesaw is ready and I'm the cream of the crop is heard thundering in the background while Kyron laughs raucously. Millie looks over to Kyla who is just sitting against the chair, her head hanging and looking at her hands as if pondering what have I done and then holding her hands to her face, letting out a hard sigh of regret. A concubine says, voice unsure and shaking, well well, they seem more lively now. Auspicious looks at her and again in a normal voice answers. You don't even know the half of it. Just behind him, Drunk Skeleton hits a strength pose and bellows out, Oh, you know it, brother. Oh, yeah. Auspicious blares back, and the concubine that spoke just slowly slips behind one of the taller women. (laughs) Agile Skeleton gently pats her Kyla on the back, saying that at least now she can suffer with others. Then Agile remembers something and slowly swivels his head to Drunk Skeleton. Hey, what the hell was with you calling me a criminal, you cunt? Drunk Skeleton roars with the laughter again. But Kyron's ears perk up to this new, fancy and previously unknown word. Oh god. Cunt? She asks curiously. And all the skeletons spin to look at her. Cunt! She yells and holds her hands up, savouring the new word like a fresh fruit. Agile Skeleton screams. No, no, wait, no, hold on. At Kyron while all the other skeletons almost double over in laughter, Agile doing his level best to tell her that that's a bad word and that she shouldn't say it. Kyla slowly pours the remaining bone dust into a pouch, her eyes seeming dead as chaos plays behind her. Kyron screams with laughter and runs from Agile, who's trying to catch her and stop her from saying cunt. (laughs) You can't say cunt. It's disgusting! Drunk skeleton laughs out, also trying to catch the small child. She's just still laughing, going, you're a cunt, you're a cunt, and then points at Kyla and then yells again, a cunt. Agile Skelton groans, no, while Auspicious and Rowdy look on in mock terror and shock. After everything finally calms down, Rowdy remembers that they heisted all that money from the carriage and notices all the chests in the corner of the headquarters that have actual guards standing around them and a drop cloth thrown over the chests. Rowdy thumps drunk on the chest and they both move over towards the men standing near the chests, whom regard the skeletons moving towards them with a mixture of uncertainty and fear. Two of the men exchanging glances as Rowdy steps forward and clears his throat, skeletal fist in front of his exposed teeth. I would like to borrow some money, he says cheerfully, holding out his skeletal hand. The guards stammer a bit while looking around for their superiors who seem to be enjoying how uncomfortable they are. The superiors have already worked out a deal with the necromancer for securing these chests and the carriage. But why waste the free show after such an entertaining day? The guards are muttering to each other, asking if the skeletons are allowed to borrow. I mean, they did get all this stuff, one says, and looks side to side and try and get confirmation from the other guards. Seeing no help come from the commanding presence whom they are busying themselves with looking at maps and books. I'm sure they can have a little bit, right? One of them whispers to the other. I'm a fucking florist. It's not like I can stop them, even if I wanted. An obvious edge of dread in his voice. Skeletons begin to bully the guards, 
seeing an opening. Auspicious Skelton claps one on the shoulder, the florist, and says cheerfully, Ah, see, this one has a good skull on his shoulders, and leans in close to the guard, grinding his teeth together menacingly. The guards are sweating and freaking out inwardly as they are bullied by dead people. Rowdy and drunk grab a few bags of coins and act chummy to the guards as they walk away, tossing the bags in their hands. A quiet, snorting laughter is heard from one of the actual guard captains, holding his map up to hide his contorted face. These poor guards were just put through the ringer for no reason whatsoever, just for the amusement of their command. All while this is happening, Kyla the necromancer is writing away in her journal, pulling up a dispatch or a map to make for more detailed notes, and then setting it back down before flipping a page. The skeleton still bullying the poor guards, Agile and Rowdy making comments about how soft the floor's skin is and running their skeletal fingers through his hair. <laughs> After a few more minutes, Kyla closes her journal, wraps it with its leather strap and hops down from her makeshift chair and contacts all her skeletons via Necroscope. You know, I have another journey we have to make, but how about we all make the trip so I can keep you company? The skeletons are suspicious and gather around their necromancer. A special skeleton slav squatting down in front of her. Where are we going then, boss? Agile skeleton murmurs out. Aye, more the merrier. What about the kids? Drunk skeleton says, jabbing his thumb at them. But then remember he has no money and rushes over and gives the girls first and the women a gold coin each. They're all confused and one of the concubines offers the gold piece towards Agile skeleton, confused. Um, no, it's fine, you keep it, he says holding his hands up in front of him and looking around to the sniggering skeletons. The woman shrugs and tucks the coin in her cleavage. (laughs) Kyla continues, I think we should go on a little jaunt deeper into enemy territory. And her hands rest on a place well behind the Arderman's territory. The large plantation that the captain had given them the knowledge of after much skeletal slapping. Her voice softens strangely, something akin to a harsh whisper. I think it could be a strategic importance. The skeletons look at each other. We're going to go free more slaves? She smiles and says, yes, more slaves, and looks at her skeletons, her eyes seeming more tired and exhausted, as if she has barely slept for weeks. We could more than likely deal a major blow to their supply lines if we can get the slaves here free and causing a ruckus, giving us more time to move the refugees here further south to other cities, After all, you four are pretty good at causing a whole mess of trouble. The skeletons all look at Drunk Skeleton, who wearily says, Those civilians should not have been driving while under the influence. The skeletons roll their eyes. Kyron, however, pipes up and raises her hand. I don't know about Millie, but I would like to go. It's been quite boring here. Millie blanches at the thought of going further behind enemy lines. But while the concubines look at Agile Skeleton, who does his best to keep his gaze forward despite feeling eyes crawling on the back of his spine. Rowdy Skelton asks the necromancer when they're going to be back, since he has some things he wants to do for his Noel. We might be back, she says, wearing a macabre grin. Might? Rowdy asks, his fresh new voice crackling with curiosity. You know, things can go awry in enemy territory. But I would like to imagine if we survive, we'll travel down and regroup with these people at a city or a town. She answers back, still wearing her grin. Okay, Rowdy says, and walks over to First, the Knoll. First, can you take care of some things while we're gone? First, the Knoll, narrows her eyes, staring accusingly at Rowdy's skeleton. What you mean, while we're gone? She growls softly, the hurt open on her face. Rowdy Skelton points at her clothes and tells her he wants her to stay behind in order to get armour made that can fit her. Rowdy is also worried about taking her behind enemy lines. What am I supposed to do? Play with the small ones and brush cow? She asks angrily, waving her hand behind her. I love how you can talk to the gnome now. I love it. I love it so much. Rowdy tries to get her to understand that the armour takes time and that she can get fully fitted while they're gone. Auspicious Skelton. While Rowdy argues with First, is currently worried about Kyla coming with him and gets her attention. Wait, if you go down, is there any way to raise yourself? Kyla laughs softly. No, I'm afraid of that. If I die, that's the end of all our stories. 
A suspicious skeleton rattles softly and stares at Kyla, while Rowdy is trying to shove a small coin purse into first hands. You need to take this money and talk to the big lady over there and get your damn armour made. You're not coming. The knoll is angrily holding the purse while gnarling hotly at Rowdy, her brain working furiously as she tries to work out a way to get around what Rowdy wants. Yeah, we like you and we want you to live and you need armour. First ears droop slightly and she looks down at the ground, her fist angrily gripping and shaking. Rowdy and Agile goes to pat her head, but she swipes their hand away angrily, snarling and walking out of HQ, stomping off into the distance. Rowdy and Agile share a look before the point of Millie is brought up. Auspicious claps a hand on Kyla's shoulders and says aloud, Ah yes, I wanted to talk to you about a special job I had in mind for Millie. Kyla looks at him strangely. But after a quick mental exchange, Kyla pipes up. Ah, right. Have her watch over the cows and horses. Millie brightens up to the idea, having no desire to get any closer to combat role again and eagerly volunteers to take care of the cows and whatever horses they leave behind. All the skeletons breathe a sigh of relief, knowing Millie has no real combat prowess but didn't really want to say it out loud and embarrass her. After that, the skeletons begin to quiet talk to each other talking about how they are going to work this mission with the necromancer in tow and keep the fleshy ones alive. When they need to, they do it via necroscype, but do enjoy using their voices. Kyron even sneaks up to a small bone cluster and begins eavesdropping in on their plans and soon actually gets into the discussion with them. They then notice that somehow Kyron is now holding a very ornate battle axe. Where the hell did you get that? I found it. You stole it, didn't you? Nope, I find it, I hit. Kyron yells as Agile goes to take the giant axe from her. Let go of my axe, you cunt. (laughs) She screams as Rowdy then grabs Kyron herself and both skeletons begin to pull, trying to separate the kid from the axe, her feet kicking and screaming. Cunt, cunt, fucking cunt. Until finally they get the axe away from her. Kyron, furious, slips down and flips Rowdy over her shoulders the skeleton landing with a crash of rattling bones and Kyron fixes Agile's skeleton with a glare while holding out her hands. No, first, you're not going to be using such bad language and you're not going to hit me with that axe. The demanding hand turns into gimme hands and you're going to use the axe responsibly. Give me it, she demands as Rowdy's skeletal hands shakily rise as if asking for help. Agile finally gives her back the axe and she clutches it to her chest. Now remember to behit, Agile goes to say, before Kyron smacks him right in the kneecaps and runs off towards Auspicious, who is currently playing with his cows and horses. During all the ruckus, Kyla has gotten her travelling pack together and has shouldered it, as well as some more additional pouches on her belt and hanging off the side of the pack. She connects to Auspicious and asks him if they can ready the carriage they hijacked for travel. And he agrees remembering the horses were standing near it. Then she connects to the skeletons on the ground and drunk skeleton, telling them to figure out what they're doing with the four women before moving to follow Auspicious. Auspicious tells Agile Skeleton to figure out a job that they can do at the camp. Agile Skeleton wants them to have easygoing jobs that don't involve anything lewd and moves towards them after standing up shakily, his knees wobbling awkwardly. Uh, I have to go off and do some more skeleton stuff he says looking at them. One woman steps forward, a slender build and not as lush as the other in terms of body type. Has much of a farmer's build, with rough hands, short blonde hair and a scattering of freckles across her face. I would like to help if possible, she says, holding her hands behind her back. Can you even fight? Agile Skelton asks warily. I can chop wood pretty good, she says happily her bright smile shining as best as it can despite however long it's been since she's been able to brush or have sustained upkeep of her health. Her teeth even seems to still have old blood on them, as if she had been rough handled a few times. Adele Skelton rubs his bony chin thoughtfully, eyeing her up and down. She seems strong, and the clothes fit her a lot better than the others. Axe chopping is much different than dueling people. It's not the same as taking your time to chip chop away. The woman still stands there awkwardly, leaning from one foot to the other. Perhaps we can use her as a spy, Rowdy says, and the woman begins to look worried, looking from agile to Rowdy, 
her smile flattering. The two skeletons begin to loudly argue, discussing using the woman as a last line of defence for the necromancer, but Agile raises a hand at the thought. Let's at least see if she can fight, Agile says, and rounds on his heels to the woman. Rowdy claps his skeletal hands together and rushes over to grab a short sword for her, while Agile pulls out his own. The woman is a little on the back foot with a sudden challenge, taking the sword awkwardly. All right, Agile Skeleton says, bending at the knee. Try and hit me. Try, try and hit you? She stammers, almost dropping the sword. We're assessing your capabilities, Rowdy exclaims and rubs his hand together gleefully. All right, she says, and takes the sword in double grip as if it were an axe haft. Pause for a moment and lunges at Agile Skeleton. Agile Skeleton, not taking the fight seriously, feels to parry her in time and the sword pranks off his breastplate. The other women give a soft cheer and the woman rolls her shoulders. Agile and Rowdy nod approvingly and Agile takes out his dagger's sheath, hold it in his hand. Agile engages full sneaky daddy mode and twirls through the air, dodging her parry and slapping her forehead with leather sheath. Oh, come on, she cries out, holding her forehead as the other women laugh. She angrily slaps him on the side of his hip bone with a flat of her sword and the two engage in a short duel while Rowdy and the other women cheer. After wrapping Agile on the skull with her sword, she sighs happily. You have promise, Agile says. We'll call it a draw, she says, and twirls on her toes to move back towards the women. Via Necroscype, Drunk tells Agile to give her a good game slap on the ass. Agile Skeleton goffs and the other skeletons are now telling him to. Eventually he caves and his skeletal hands clap hard on her butt cheek. The shock of the sneak attack causes her to jump and drop the short sword, while the other women laugh raucously and point at her. The woman slowly bends her knees, grabs the sword and moves back in line with the women, who bump her shoulders onto hers while saying some crude things involving bones. Oh God. Agile, now embarrassed, face palms in regret while the other skeletons laugh at him. After everyone calms down, Packs and supplies are gathered. The woman is outfitted with what's left of the armour and straps up. They learn that her name is Omen Jauntus and then they all make their way to the carriage. Minus Million first. Auspicious takes the carriage seat after setting up the horses. The carriage repaired to accept four horses again and Drunk Skeleton climbs onto the roof. Rowdy believes that first is trying to stow away and searches the entire carriage carefully even checking the axles and anywhere she can squeeze in. However, Rowdy cannot find scent nor hide of her. Rowdy takes a rear outer rumble seat and Agile sits next to Auspicious, putting his booted feet up onto the runners and leaning back lazily. Kyron and Kyla are already seated inside the carriage and Kyla pokes her head out to see what the holdup is and sees the armoured woman. You've got to be shitting me, she says. Her eyes lowered and a growl on her voice as her skeletons have once again added to their menagerie. Calm down, boss. She can't fight, says Agile, waggling his boots back and forth. Omen blushes and takes a seat inside the carriage as well, across from her, sitting Kyla, whose arms are crossed and looking mighty unhappily. I still think she's jealous that there's an actual woman on board. Drunk skeleton necroscapes, and all the skeletons fill Kyla's head with laughter. Kyla just growls again, and all the skeletons have to scramble as all of their bottom jaws suddenly come loose. And after everyone is settled, Auspicious clacks his teeth together twice, and the horses are set off in a quiet trot, making their way down the trail and then out to the, onto the road. Drunk Skeleton is happily riding up on top of the carriage, the wind flowing through his sockets and ribs, the trees hustling past, until he hears a thump next to him. The skeleton looks over and sees First crouching there, her fur covered in leaves and a few sticks protrude from here and there. The knoll puts her fingers to her lips and bears her fangs in a smile. The drunken skeleton nods his head towards her and holds his bony fingers to his teeth. Your secret's safe with me, he whispers, and the knoll thumps down next to the skeleton, her short tail waggling happy. Rowdy, however, has no idea sitting on the back of the carriage and is doing his best to watch for any signs of a knoll trying to make your way on board. So yeah boys, if you've any of you noticed, I actually kind of ran out of time to edit this video. Um, I'm actually away tomorrow. Um, the time of recording this 
it's about 11, 12 o'clock, and I kind of, I'm going away for about a week and a half, so I'll be back. I've got a lot of videos lined up, so don't worry about that. Um, if you guys remember, remember Garp Camp? Do you remember that story? Oh, um, I never got going to continuing on with all sick and whatnot. You guys will really enjoy it. Go ahead, watch that video, and then you'll be all up to date for what's to come. It's really good. I'm really looking forward to it. Also, while I'm here, you need to remember to check out the author's YouTube channel, Guard Blue Miniatures. He does miniature reviews as name entails. But look, that's something to check out. Let us know what you thought down below. I really enjoyed this part. I was, uh, I really th thought it was funny when you're the captain broke his neck. I really enjoyed the skeleton party. Megan enjoys recording it. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. This was a really big part. So look, hopefully that's enough to keep you going until... L6 Revenge comes out, which won't be too long, I assure you that. Anyway, look, as always, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Remember to subscribe and all that other good stuff.